Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to be talking about the OCZ Vertex 3, a Lenovo notebook with AMD Fusion, new MacBook Pros, and Thunderbolts in there. Plus, we're going to be talking about contests, a whole lot more. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Done screwing around. Can we talk about technology? <laughs> yes, I, uh, sir. Get the freaking work, huh? <laughs> I'm trying to work, but you see, Slacker. I have to talk. So yeah, H hello, folks. I'm Aya Zaktar, alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta from Hot Hardware. How are you guys doing? Fantabulous. Yeah, I was doing better before I started talking to you guys today. Yeah, but, you know, uh, I... <laughs> so mean. So, so angry. Marco's so angry. But, you know, I, I know it'll make him feel better. Let's talk about <laughs> the OCZ Vertex 3 SSD. I know there's a preview up on Hot Hardware. I know, in yep. fact, that you are... You have somewhere, maybe off screen, the actual SSD. What can you tell I, us about this thing? I do. Here's the sexy little beast. Well, look at that. So this uh, this new uh, this new little guy here. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, we previewed the Vertex Three Pro, which is the enterprise uh, class version of OCC's Vertex Three, and that thing just rocked in the benchmarks. So they quickly followed up with this uh, standard Vertex Three. Much more affordable, and it actually, you know, in standard desktop benchmarks, turned in better benchmark scores than the Vertex 3 Pro. You know, the Sandforce 2000 series controller in here is coupled to a Micron NAND flash memory, and the combination of, of those two things with some firmware tuning resulted in some killer, killer benchmark scores literally across the board. You said it was more affordable. What, what does it cost compared to the Pro? So the Pro, the um, 200 gig version was going to be uh, 800 bucks. This one is 499, but there's also going to be a 120 gig version that's 249. And while they're still expensive versus a hard drive, that's only about 20% more expensive than the existing Vertex 2 line and other uh, first gen Sandforce drives. Yet it's about double the performance, so you can easily justify the uh, the additional cost. Now we're going to mix things up. We're going to actually mix in a reader question from RR Play. I'm going to paraphrase <laughs> here. When do you think SSDs will replace traditional hard drives? You know, the spinning Ooh. monsters. Crystal so, ball time. Yeah, so, you know, it, it kind of depends on if you mean replace completely and you're not going to have any, you know, spinning media in your system. I think we're still, you know, quite a few years away. It's going to happen. Um, we're still quite a ways off. But if you, if you focus, you know, your, your vision on the enthusiast market, as far as bootable OS volumes, they kind of already have. I mean, everybody that wants a super fast system that can afford it are buying SSDs now for their OS and boot volume. So it kind of depends on how you phrase the question, uh, you know, your view of the market. What do you think, Dave? I think uh, also you have to consider the mobile market. Uh, I think notebooks are ripe for this technology, and we're already seeing some... Uh, new technologies coming out from the likes of Intel, you know, some uh, micro uh, SATA type technologies where, you know, SSDs um, are going to have, you know, some pretty good impact in the mobile space as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, really a question of uh, the quality of computing experience you want versus how much your, you know, your, your pain threshold might be. But, um, you know, it's hard to, to you, could, you could throw a dart at it uh, in terms of time frame, but I think, you know, the real question is um, slowly but surely it's coming and there will come a day when, you know, at least for, for the consumer storage market, uh, you know, we're all solid state. I think in the enterprise yeah. where bulk storage and, and servers and uh, the data center, that's going to be a long time coming. Let's talk about notebooks. I know Hot Harbor has got a big review out there of the Lenovo's the Lenovo ThinkPad X120e. Now, this actually has the AMD Fusion, which I think has CPU, GPU on the same chip, right? You're, uh, you're, you're doing your homework. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart guy. So, yeah, uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad X120e, one of the first ThinkPads uh, ever to hit the market uh, with AMD's uh, technology inside, and, and this time it's, it's Fusion, uh, the Zakate processor, the E350, under the hood, uh, what AMD calls their Brazos platform. And this thing is actually it, it, it impressed the heck out of us. It's a it's a 12 inch uh, notebook, which you know frankly consumes power and costs more like a, a netbook. Um, and uh, so with you know AMD's fusion technology, Sakate under the hood, they're able to get this thing down from a price point, uh, entry level price to uh, 399, 
and you know scales up from there. We tested one uh, at 579 was the SKU, you know, kind of fully loaded, four gig of RAM and all that good stuff. But you know, really nice, you know, traditional ThinkPad build quality with Zakate under the hood. So you know, good battery life, nice low cost, and performance with the integrated graphics, uh, pretty impressive. So th I would assume at that price point, there's no discrete graphics, no switching, nothing of that of that nature. The graphics performance you said was actually pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's it, it, because it's it's on die you know, for AMD, and uh, you know it's you know an integrated IGP. There's there's no need for a discrete GPU at all. Uh, and actually, the nice thing is there's really no need for a discrete GPU because, especially in this class machine, AMD's uh, graphics core. Uh, under the hood uh, in Zakate is is very much up to the task, and we actually tested it versus uh, Nvidia's Ion 2 uh, bolted up to a dual core Atom processor. You know, it's traditional Ion 2 platform uh, versus you know with an Atom D525 at 1.8 gigahertz, and Zakate or uh, the AMD Fusion processor, as it's called, actually beat uh, the discrete Ion 2. Uh, graphics chip with Atom uh, in uh, a couple of our traditional gaming benchmarks. We had uh, uh, Half-Life 2, Enemy Territory, Quake Wars on the low end, and then Left 4 Dead 2, a little bit more mid-range. Um, so yeah, it's got some gaming under the hood, certainly some high-def video playback capabilities, and battery life was uh, pretty good as well. You know, frankly, we've seen a little bit, a little bit better from uh, lower-end Atom systems, but you don't get all the power, obviously, all the, all the horsepower. Uh, uh, 211 minutes to be exact is how long the battery lasts on a traditional charge. About three and a half hours. Speaking of notebooks, there was a small company in Cupertino that just came out with these new computers. They're called MacBook Pros uh, this week, new versions of them. And uh, <laughs> I think they somehow snuck in quad core i7s in there. Marco, uh, what, yeah. what do you know about this latest refresh from that little tiny company called Apple? Yeah, some some fruit company came out with these uh, with these new notebooks. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, just uh, Core i7s. The the 13 inch, 15 inch, and 17 inch uh, MacBook Pros have all been refreshed. Um, they're all outfitted now with Intel's Sandy Bridge platform. Um, so new Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 processors. The uh, the smaller machines, the 13 inch, have dual core Sandy Bridge processors. The 15 inch and the 17 inch get quad core options. And the bigger machines also have discrete uh, DX11 class Radeon 6000 series GPUs. So a big design win for AMD. They're really happy to have taken the uh, taken that back from NVIDIA. Any, any, so, any idea okay. why they switched off of NVIDIA to, to AMD, especially when they had something like Sandy Bridge available? I mean, why would they mess with that? <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of tough to say because NVIDIA actually has some really strong uh, graphics, mobile graphics chips right now. Right. You know, at a variety of power envelopes, it's probably a combination of, of timing and AMD just being there a little sooner with some some low power DX11 stuff. Um, who's to say if it's going to be AMD exclusive moving forward? Who knows? Apple likes to uh, to to pick and choose as they refresh their lineups. Plus, they added in Intel's Lightpeak, which has been renamed Thunderbolt to their, yep. I think it's to the mini display port port. So they haven't added any new ports, but they've added in a lot, a uh, lot more functionality. I think this thing gets up to 10 gigabits per second if you have right. like, a special copper fiber optic wire. Uh, Dave, what do you think about this new I/O port? Is it like the future? Is it anything? Should anybody care? I, I think, like anything else, you know, certainly additional bandwidth is good, um, and. Uh, I think it's just a question of you know how quickly the industry races to adopt it. Um, I, I think you know sort of it remains to be seen. Uh, I think it's it's definitely an enabler in certain applications where a high bandwidth ex external port, whether you talk about um, you know video uh, or you know just large sequential file transfers over over that link, um, it, it's certainly an enabler, but. When, when the industry is going to adopt it is, is another question, and, and how quickly and, and if, I guess, beyond Apple. So we'll see how that plays out. Now, Marco, do you know anything about the technical aspects of Thunderbolt? Like, I mean, I, mean, I, yeah. I think it's based on PCIe Express, right? So it's actually it's dual protocol. Um, it can handle PCI, native PCI Express and DisplayPort uh, information. It also can work with uh, fiber optic or copper cables. Um, and the peak bandwidth is 10 gigabits uh, bidirectional. So you're looking at 
huge, huge bandwidth. And um, we should point out, it's not just Apple and Intel that are you know, kind of just throwing this on the market right now. There's tons of partners. And we've already seen a Lacey come out with ex external drives that are going to use Lightpeak, Western Digital is involved, and a, a handful of others. So I think you're going to see some peripherals. And uh, it's kind of with that much bandwidth that it's disposable, I, I think there's going to be applications uh, that come up to, to use this technology that we haven't thought of yet. As a video geek, I'm thrilled about this, by the way. Yeah, I'm absolutely. just like, you could do like a multi-camera setup and you can do everything with one port. Right, and, and it, a tiny little port. And the fact is, it'll you could basically have all these adapters. If, if you could make a, PC Express, a PCIe card for it, you could make an adapter to work on Thunderbolt. That's got me psyched. So, so well, in, here's the other cool thing. Well, because it's, na it, it's native, um, native PCI Express, right. you can now have like external boxes with PCI Express that PCI Express devices and use the native PCI Express drivers, uh, most likely. So there's lots of possibilities that could happen so here. There's a chance for ad adoption everywhere. Let's talk about, let's finish up <laughs> things with AMD dishing details about their processor known as Bulldozer. Dave, what do you know? Yeah, actually, um, they taped this thing out uh, mid last year and they sampled it uh, in, in Q4, mm -hmm. um, known as the Orkai chip, or, or Chi maybe, I guess. I'm not sure how you'd pronounce that. Uh, but uh, a little research tells us that is a, uh, a legendary uh, eight-tailed, eight-headed serpent, Japanese uh, legend, uh, believe it or not. And so, yeah, it's, it's AMD's next-generation uh, eight-core processor. And so far, the initial architecture details that AMD is, is offering us look impressive. Uh, you've got a, a chip that is capable of, uh, well, it's got a four-pipe integer unit. Uh, with a pair of integer units per core. So you've got actually eight full uh, representations to the OS for you know eight threaded multiprocessing on a single uh, on a single what they call a bulldozer block. And we've got one more question from a reader. This is from Cool Ice. I'm going to paraphrase here. Should I wait for AMD's bulldozer line or should I just go with Sandy Bridge right now? I think at this point, you know, we're getting real close. This thing's supposed to sample in Q2. They've already sampled uh, uh, to manufacturers uh, in, Q in Q4. It's supposed to come to market in Q2 for retail. So I think it's probably worth uh, to wait and see. Uh, word is that this chip should uh, handily take on Intel's architecture, you know, their, their fastest Core i7 stuff um, in multi-threaded applications. Um, and in single-threaded applications, it, it looks like perhaps Intel is going to have an edge. But uh, also word is that because AMD has built this chip so efficiently and it's in uh, Global Foundry's new 32 nanometer process uh, technology, that it, it also can scale clock speed significantly higher than we're used to seeing. So 3.5 gigahertz is what's rumored to be the, uh, the clock speed at launch. And so um, this thing... Um, you know they can they can scale uh, higher clock speeds to you know sort of compensate for that slight deficiency in single thread mode. So this thing's looking looking like pretty serious stuff. And if you're ready to plunk down some change, maybe hold off. How is AMD in their idea and their releases? They're saying that it's going to be Q Q2. You said is it? Are they usually on time? Yeah, I I, I think well, Marco's laughing. Why, why the sixty four thousand dollar question. They've sampled no. OEM supposedly and. Um, we haven't gotten much more resolution from the manufacturers uh, that they've sampled, but yeah, I mean, they, the execution's the, the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Who knows, Marco? Yeah, you you know, any opinions there? Yeah, I'm, and I'm just—I wasn't chuckling at AMD. I'm chuckling at the at the uh, the industry in general. When when someone says Q2, it yeah. usually means the absolute last second, the last in Q2. day. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if you can hold out, it. I don't know if if you can hold out that long for for a next gen processor because Sandy Bridge is out now. It's going to be in laptops. I mean, come on, quad core is ready out now in a laptop. That's that sounds ridiculous, actually. Mar <laughs> quad Marco, core that can process eight threads. <laughs> oh, this would be something, Marco. Let's remind the people about the contest that's ending very soon. Yes, it's it's ending uh, in the next uh, couple of days, depending on when we publish this. The uh, the chilling with the hot hardware community sweepstakes is a uh, in its final days. We're giving away a killer a Core i7 870 based machine that I am going to build with an SSD, four gigs of RAM, Velociraptor hard drive. Um, very cool Zygmatech case, Radeon 6870 graphics, lots and lots of cool stuff. All you got to do is come to the site and comment. So get in there and comment and make some friends. That's so easy to get an awesome <laughs> machine. Marco builds awesome machines if you didn't know that. And they're neat. <laughs> they're super neat. 
And, and if you want to see one we just pitch. built, we just posted that video of you and I. Yes, there's a video at, uh, at Hot Hardware and also at thisoldnerd.com where Marco uh, made me build part of a PC while he did the lion's share. But he did explain everything, why you do step by step by step. It's like an epic 30 minutes, but you should really watch it to understand how to build a PC from just scratch. I, I learned a whole lot. I, yeah. learned, I learned a whole lot, and I, I really enjoyed the comments of the forums at Hot Hardware asking or saying that I asked the right questions. Thanks for noticing, guys, because I was trying to <laughs> learn, too. You know, I was really trying. By the way, everything we talked about is at HotHardware.com and around the web. Let's see. Where is it around the web? Facebook.com slash Hot Hardware. Dig.com slash Hot Hardware. Twitter.com slash Hot Hardware. And YouTube.com slash Hot Hardware Bids. That's everything. So we'll or see like everybody. The scourge. The scur- you should think of a nice thing. What's a nice thing that's everywhere? Air. We're like, we're like water. Yes. Moss. We're like Ethernet. Yeah. We're, like- <laughs> <laughs> we're everywhere.